we welcome you on this lovely day. In one sense, but it has to be a mixture of both when we come, because we are created beings and we are finite. And there comes a time for us also to leave all that we have had in this world behind us. All that we have, we have on loan from God. And when the time comes to hand back, then we ought to be as thankful as another was who said, the Lord has taken away. The Lord has given, the Lord has taken away. Blessed be the name of the Lord. We extend a very warm welcome to you all here on this day. And we, we know that the family here greatly appreciates your being with them here. There are memories of days that have gone by. And many, many things spring to mind at a time like this. And for that, Lord, we give thanks and praise unto the Lord. Let us now pray. Eternal and ever-blessed Father in heaven, the giver of every good and perfect gift, in whom we live and move and have our being, and with whom we are to walk humbly with all the years and days of our life here. But we thank you above everything else, Lord, that while on life's journey here, we can meet one who can change our whole outlook on life and make us to become to be a people who can see beyond the realms of that which is seen and are finite to the things that are unseen. And we bless thee, Lord, on this day that that's just one that we are gathered here with on this day Millie, Lord, was a lovely wo woman, Lord, a lovely woman and a fair woman and a kind and considerate person in all her dealings and was an immense strength unto her loving husband during their uh, ministry in Gerloch and Barvis and latterly in Inverness. Lord our God, no one understands how important that is except those who have experienced it. Like every situation that we have in this life, Lord, we know not of these things until we pass through them. We don't know, Lord, what loss is until we lose the things that were precious to us in this world. And we gather on this day now, Lord, to console, Lord, to those to try to do so with your help, Lord, that you would touch the pain in the heart on this day and realize that we also are on this journey. Every single one of us, Lord, however young or old we might be, we bless thee, Lord, for that we met with thee, Lord, on that, the highway of life here, that we met with one who was mighty to save and who was to remain with us forever. And that is the difference, Lord, in a Christian's life and in a Christian's death, is that they have one who remains when everything else has disappeared. Oh, bless us, Lord, together here on this day. Uh, bless the entire family here. You know them, Lord, better than we know them. And you know them by name because, Lord, they are thine. And you know that they are also have had their share of difficulties through life here, have had their own share of losses, Lord, and crosses. And you have brought them here to be 
with them today who share in the like experiences. We bless thee, Lord, for the family that you bless them with, and for Donald and his wife, Lord, and their children, and uh, for the Rhoda, his devoted daughter, Lord. We thank you, Lord, for her, and we, Lord, mourn today that Ian is no longer with us here, that he has passed on before us. O oh Lord, we pray for our family on this day for Maria and for all, Lord, her children in her own pain and parting in the last few months together. O oh, how we need one another, Lord, in this weary world that we live in, and in the midst of all the changes and chances of life, how else can we come to? Thou hast the words of eternal life. We pray for Shona, Lord, and we pray for Roddy and Chrisanne and their families also, and Willie John and his family. They've all had their share of this in some form or another, and are better to understand it than those who have not passed through it. We thank you, Lord, that this is life here in this world, life, as Jesus said, in all its fullness you have given to your children, that even although they pass away from this world, they are still with us in that sense that they would, nothing will wake them again in this life except the voice that awoke them one day and will, they will respond to at the last, when Jesus returns to this earth to take his own to be with him. O oh Lord our God, what a wonderful day that will be if we look on this day and think it's wonderful and warm and what not, but nothing compared to the things when Christ returns to this earth. Who would not want to be on his side on that day, Lord? Who, Lord, but a fool would say, that there is no God. Help us, Lord, to understand these things and bless those who have come from near and far on this day, those who are with us here from America on this day, with us from Ireland on this day, and all, Lord, uh, the others uh, that are connected through the bonds of flesh and blood. We pray, Lord, that you would grant them your peace in their hearts, the peace that passes all understanding in a world that is so turbulent, Lord, and so confused and looking in all directions for peace when there is no peace except in the Lord Jesus Christ. Uh, bless our, our gathering here together. Oh, make it, Lord, sanctify the word to our hearts that we might know it and that we might believe it savingly for time and for eternity. When our turn, turn comes, Lord, to fold up the tent and march forward, that it will be into your own glory and into your own presence, who said with the people on earth here that he is the Lord, I change not. Bless them, Lord, together, and bless our efforts in singing and praising your holy name, Lord. That is, your name is worthy of all praise and glory. For you have, Lord, broken the bands of death in Christ on the cross. And we have gone through the grave, and we can say, O grave, where is your victory? They have no victory over, Lord, death, over the second death, and we pray that you would bless us and eternally that we might be with yourself when the time comes. Bless, Lord, our souls. Speak to our souls here on this day. Give us a hearing ear, not to hear what man says, but what God our Lord has to say to us in the midst of all the messages that go out here from day to day. O oh Lord our God, many today are mourning and grieving their own personal relatives and friends, and we must not forget that we are bound up in the bundle of life here, 
and that we need to remember our Creator in the days of our youth, before the evil days come, and we say we have no delight in them. O oh Lord, bless our nation today, our world and our church, and bring us back, Lord, to the great points of Scripture that we need, Lord, for direction in following you. For we ask those things in the name of him who is worthy of all praise, honour and glory, for Jesus' sake. Amen. Now we sing to God's praise in Psalm 40 on your order of service. To the tune base of Harris, I waited for the Lord my God and patiently did bear at length to me he did incline my voice and cry to hear. In thee let all be glad and joy who seeking thee abide, who thy salvation love say still, the Lord be magnified. I waited for the Lord my God. I waited for
John Murdo MacDonald will lead us in the tribute and readings. Jesus said, Father, I want those you have given me to be with me where I am and to see my glory, the glory you have given me because you loved me before the creation of the world. And these wonderful words of Jesus give our gathering here today uh, a glorious uh, and an eternal context and significance as our worship becomes part of the process by which God the Father answers the prayer of God the Son. And although for us, and especially for the family, uh, this is still, uh, even in the light of Christ's victory in our own lives, this is still a bittersweet experience of parting with those whom we love. Yet for Millie, it is the most glorious and wonderful homecoming as she sees face to face the beauty and the glory of the Lord and is welcomed into the loving embrace of the Saviour whom she loved and served for so long. Millie was born in Glasgow on the 28th of February 1939 the eldest of a family of three, together with her brother Archie and sister Rhoda, born to Donald Ross of Uig in Skye and his wife Janet Kennedy of Crossabust in Lewis. She was brought up on White Street in Glasgow and attended Downhill Primary School before going on to Hindland Secondary School, from where she progressed to Jordan Hill College to follow her chosen career of primary school nursing, uh, teaching, uh, qualifying from Jordan Hill with distinction. <coughs> she subsequently taught at various schools in Glasgow, including Fairfield and Drum Chapel. And during her training, um, her Christian upbringing led her to a personal commitment to the Lord uh, Jesus Christ. As her Saviour and Lord, she gave her heart to the Lord Jesus Christ during her training. Her college days were not easy, as her mother, who was only in her 50s, mid-50s at the time, passed away suddenly while Millie was working during her summer break in a hotel in Skye. Her mother's passing meant that Millie had to return suddenly uh, to Glasgow and take on the responsibility uh, over the next few years of providing extra maternal support for her teenage brother Archie and her 13-year-old sister Rhoda. Nevertheless, her Christian witness at college developed uh, with her taking a leading role as president of the Christian Union in college. Um, she was quite an achievement for a young lady in those days. Millie also taught Sunday school at Gardner Street Church of Scotland. And these experiences, as she saw herself in later years, served her well, as through them, God was preparing her for his future calling on her life. It was in the fellowship of Gardner Street that Millie gave her heart away again, this time to Anisian. They met in the fellowship of Gardner Street and their friendship blossomed into romance. And after his uh, graduation, he was then a student at Glasgow University, after an ASEAN's graduation, the young couple headed off to Edinburgh, where he was to complete his training for the ministry, while Millie taught in a variety of schools there. During this period, an ASEAN and Millie set up their first home together in Blackburn in West Lothian. And they launched into mystery, uh, ministry together through a call to Gerloch. Uh, and it was here that they were blessed to become parents to their three children, uh, Donald, uh, Ian, and Shona. And after seven years in a gospel ministry in Gerloch, which is still remembered 
with great affection and much gratitude to God, they moved to Barbas here in Lewis, where they served for another seven years, seeing God at work in the life of the congregation there, as their ministry bore much fruit for his glory. From there, the family moved to Inverness and to the East Church uh, to complete another 26 years in gospel ministry, um, the, a time that truly blessed Anisian and Millie and the family and also and especially blessed the congregation there. After the children started school, Millie returned to teaching, uh, firstly as a supply teacher in Laxdale and subsequently at Crown School in Inverness. As well as her teaching duties, uh, Millie was constantly involved in the children's work at the East Church, teaching in Sunday school and preparing for and participating in what was a hectic week of the children's holiday club. And I remember during my time at the East Church how she was genuinely and lovingly involved with these young folk. There were, I think, about 80 children in the Sunday school at the East Church uh, at that time. And Millie knew every one of them. They, she knew their names, she knew their families, she knew their circumstances. And I can still see her speaking to the little ones, engaging with them lovingly and kindly in a very real and personal way. And Millie prayed for them all and her prayers have followed them out into the world where today many are engaged in sharing their own gospel faith with others to the glory of God. Millie was also a warm and welcoming, generous hostess to all of the congregations which she served, to all who called and stayed at the manse, whether it be members, folks coming from the congregation, or um, numerous visiting ministers, missionaries, representatives of gospel uh, organizations, and also, of course, not to forget, probationer ministers. John Lachy and I have much to thank Millie for, um, as have so many others. Uh, dispensing not just endless cups of tea and coffee along with the most delightful and delicious baking, but also giving so much encouragement. Uh, I was going to say to young men, not quite so young, maybe John Lachey was, but young men, as they said, out in fear and trembling out into the ministry. And her encouragement I still remember with gratitude. And, of course, also some very, very sound advice. Now, John Murdo, don't let him boss you about. He will, you know, if you let him. And she even tried on occasions to keep an ASEAN right. Not a, an enviable task. I, I remember the first couple of Sundays at the East Church. And the Sunday morning service, and an ASEAN is in full flow, preaching the gospel powerfully but with absolutely no awareness of the clock that is ticking. And I became aware of someone behind me <coughs> coughing <coughs> and clearing their throat. And I thought, oh my goodness, that poor lady's got a bad cough. <coughs> Maybe I should go and get her a glass of water. Only to realize or rather be told that it was Millie reminding on the end that people had buses to catch and lunches to attend to. I'm not sure she was very successful in that particular aspect of her ministry. But Millie's prime focus was to be a, a devoted wife. She gave her heart, as I said, to, not just to Anisian, uh, but to the family too. Fully supportive, fully participating, appropriately, lovingly, humbly, seeking no attention or glory for herself, but rather that the glory would all be the Lord's. And her life was also lovingly and supremely dedicated to her three children, Donald, Ian, and Shona, and to those that they brought into her life, her daughters-in-law, Jennifer and Maria, and her seven grandchildren, 
who were more than precious to her, upon whom she poured out her heart of love in so many different ways, and who brought a real sense of completeness to Millie's life. She was eased gently into her retirement years as she and Anasia, along with others, uh, engaged in several sessions of involvement in the witness of the High Free Church here in Stornoway during a critical period of transition for the fellowship. And as with all the previous ministries in which Millie was involved, this too is remembered with much gratitude and affection. To him be the glory for all of it, as Millie would undoubtedly say. The psalmist says, precious in the Lord's sight is the death of his saints. How wonderfully true, um, as the words of John 17 that we read at the beginning remind us. And what a sense of peace and comfort and joy these words bring us today. As we give thanks to God for Millie's life, lived in the loving, dedicated service to her Saviour. And as we hand her back to him in a sense, in this painful yet joyful process, this bittersweet process, the words of Proverbs 31 provide a fitting and an appropriate testimony. Let us hear God's word. A wife of noble character, who can find? She is worth far more than rubies. Her husband has full confidence in her and lacks nothing of value. She brings him good, not harm, all the days of her life. She selects wool and flax and works with eager hands. She is like the merchant ships, bringing her food from afar. She gets up while it is still night. She provides food for her family and portions for her female servants. She is clothed with strength and dignity. She can laugh at the days to come. She speaks with wisdom and faithful instruction is on her tongue. She watches over the affairs of her household and does not eat the bread of idleness. Her children arise and call her blessed her husband also, and he praises her. Many women do noble things, but you surpass them all. Charm is deceptive, and beauty is fleeting. But a woman who fears the Lord is to be praised. Honour her for all that her hands have done, and let her works bring her praise at the city gate. And then again, let's read some verses from Psalm 16. Psalm 16. <clears throat> Lord, you alone are my portion and my cup. You make my lot secure. The boundary lines have fallen for me in pleasant places. Surely I have a delightful inheritance. I will praise the Lord who counsels me. Even at night my heart instructs me. I keep my eyes always on the Lord. With him at my right hand I shall not be shaken. <coughs> Therefore my heart is glad and my tongue rejoices. My body also will rest secure. Because you will not abandon me to the realm of the dead. Nor will you let your faithful one see decay. You make known to me the path of life. You will fill me with joy in your presence, with eternal pleasures at your right hand. And finally, um, the wonderful words of Jesus in John's Gospel and chapter 10. I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd lays down his life for the sheep. The hired hand is not the shepherd and does not own the sheep. So when he sees the wolf coming, he abandons the sheep and runs away. Then the wolf attacks the flock and scatters it. The man runs away because he is a hired hand and cares nothing for the sheep. I am the good shepherd. I know my sheep 
and my sheep know me, just as the Father knows me and I know the Father, and I lay down my life for the sheep. My sheep listen to my voice. I know them and they follow me. I give them eternal life and they shall never perish. No one will snatch them out of my hand. My Father who has given them to me is greater than all. No one can snatch them out of my Father's hand. I and the Father are one. Amen. And we pray that God will bless his word to us at this time. We're going to continue our worship uh, in praise to God from Psalm 23. Uh, Psalm 23, wonderful words that we all uh, know so well that we sing so often, especially at times uh, such as this. We're going to sing the psalm to the tune Loch Broom. Acknowledging, of course, that our hope and our comfort today does not come from knowing the words of the psalm, but from knowing the shepherd himself. The Lord's my shepherd, I'll not want. He makes me down to lie in pastures green. He leadeth me the quiet waters by. by <clears throat> The Lord's my shepherd, I don't want. He makes me down to lie in pastures green. He leadeth me. few verses in Paul's epistle to the Romans in uh, chapter 8 at verse 31 to the end. What shall we then say to these things? If God be for us, who can be against us? 
He that spared not his own son, but delivered him up for us all, how shall he not with him also freely give us all things? Who shall lay anything to the charge of God's elect? It is God that justifieth. Who is he that condemneth? It is Christ that died, yea, rather, that is risen again, who is even at the right hand of God, who also maketh intercession for us. Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall tribulation, or distress, or persecution, or famine, or nakedness, or peril, or sword? As it is written, for thy sake we are killed all the day long. We are accounted as sheep for the slaughter. No, in all these things we are more than conquerors through him that loved us. For I am persuaded that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor powers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor height, nor depth, nor any other creature shall be able to separate us from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. That is how important it is for us to have a living relationship with this one. That is when we can claim such promises. I'm now going to ask the Reverend Hugh Ferrier to lead us in a word of prayer. Well, friends, let's draw near to this same God in prayer. Let's pray. Our Heavenly Father and Eternal God, we come into your presence this afternoon and we thank you that we have been able to sing together of the fact that you are the God who hears the prayers, who hears the voices, the cries of his people, that no matter how deep and how dark the pit they may find themselves in is, you are the God who inclines his ear to every word spoken and even to the words unspoken, but they are still groanings that you are able to understand and that you are able to respond to and answer. And we thank you for the fact that you are the God who is revealed in the person and work of the Lord Jesus Christ, the one who is described and who is depicted so often in the word of God as being a good shepherd, that we have been able to sing together of the fact that there is a shepherd who goes before his sheep, leading them and guiding them along life's journey to the places where they may find refreshment and the places where they may find restoration but he is also the shepherd who goes beside his people when they find themselves in the dark and the difficult and the desolate valleys the places where they would never have chosen for themselves and yet he is the shepherd who doesn't simply go ahead of them doesn't simply go before them but rather goes beside them in such places in fact we're even told in your word that he is the shepherd who carries the lambs very close uh, to his own bosom. And we thank you that he is the shepherd who uh, doesn't simply go before and beside his people, but who also goes behind them, that he is the one who pursues and follows after them with his own goodness and with his own mercy, his covenant love, his covenant grace, because he is the shepherd who has pledged and who has promised that he will lose none of those whom the Father has given to him. We thank you and bless you for that wonderful reminder that we have been given from your word today, that when a person is placed into the hand of the Good Shepherd, and nothing will be able to pluck them from that hand. And as we have just read together from your word, nothing will be able to separate them from the love of God that is theirs in Christ Jesus not the frailty of mind, not the frailty of body, not even the frailty of spirit, because the one who is the shepherd 
is strong and sufficient to save, that he is the one who begins a good work in the lives of his people and that he will bring that work to full completion. And as we come into this place of mourning today, mourning the loss of a much-loved wife, a much-loved mother and grandmother, and member of a congregation, a much-loved aunt and great-aunt, a much-loved sister, we thank you and bless you for Millie's life. We thank you for what we have heard today of the way that you first called and drew her to yourself, the way that she was given that grace to give her heart to the Lord Jesus Christ, and for the way that you kept her through all the experiences and all the providences in life's journey, that in the good seasons and in the trying seasons, that she was one who was able to speak of being kept and helped and sustained by you. And we thank you and bless you for the fact that even in the last few years, which were more difficult and which were more trying in, in her own life and in her own experience, uh, how her interest was still in the things of your word, the things of your gospel, uh, how she was able to continue worshipping you with your people, that that was where her heart was. We thank you for the, the blessing and the joy, the, the lift that it gave to our own congregation here in Stornway uh, when we saw her worshipping with us in that Sunday at the beginning of April. And what an encouragement it was uh, for so many, after so many years of knowing Millie, to see her once again worshipping you with the congregation there. And we thank you and bless you that you are a God who is faithful and that you do not fail, you do not forsake, you do not forget about your people, whatever they may face, uh, whatever they may be going through and whatever may come against them. And we thank you for the reminder that if God be for us, then who or what can possibly be against us? And yet as we think back on a life so well lived, a life that was such a support and an encouragement to so many, a life that pointed so many people to the attractiveness and the altogether loveliness of Jesus, we remember her family today who are left behind. We think especially of Innesian, and the loss of a much-loved wife and helpmate of so many years and so many decades. We thank you for the way that they were a support to one another as they sought to support other people, as they sought to pastor others, as they sought to point others to Jesus. And we pray that in these days, in Asian, it would be very assured of your support and of your sustaining and of your strengthening. We thank you for the way that you have sustained him in his loss until this point and how he is such a wonderful outlook on all of this, such a wonderful testimony, how he can still speak of the fact that even in the loss of a much-loved wife, one so precious and dear to him, that he can still see tokens of your mercy and of your kindness. We think of him, though, and we pray for him and that he would be very assured that you are the one who will not leave him or forsake him. We also remember the children. We think of Donald and Shona here, and we thank you for all the ways that they were able to support their mother, all the ways that they were able to be there for her and were able to be with her. And we pray that in these days they would hear the promises that you give in your word, that when a mother's great love is eventually extinguished. You are the God uh, whose love for his people can never be extinguished because you are the one who has carved their very names into the palms of his hands. And we pray uh, that Donald and Shona would know that, uh, would know these gospel truths in a very powerful and precious way in these days and in the days that lie ahead. And while we pray that for them, we remember those who have lost a much-loved mother-in-law. We think of Jennifer and Maria too. We commit them into your care and into your keeping, as well as their children, the grandchildren, in the loss of a grandmother. We think of the wider family too. We think of Rhoda, Millie's sister. We think of the in-laws as well, and the wider family unit and the wider friendship circles 
each one with their own memories of Millie, each one grieving in their own and unique ways. And we pray that each and every one might in this season know you uh, to be the God of all comfort and the Father of all mercies. We thank you that you give us so many promises as to who you are and what you do for your people in your word because we are so prone to forgetting. We are so prone to having a small and diminished view of you. We are so prone to doubting your care. And you give us promise after promise to remind your people that you are the one who loves with an everlasting love, love without beginning and love without end. We pray, O Lord, for the family and all those who will be uh, preparing for the very solemn and difficult uh, duties that lie ahead in the remainder of the day as they go over to Uig. We pray, O Lord, that you would bless them as they go to that place, a place that's so uh, poignant and painful for them, when they can look back and think of others who have been taken from their family circle. Uh, and we pray, O Lord, that they would be very conscious of your everlasting arms being round about them there, and of your sustaining and strengthening of them in that place. We remember uh, David McLeod as he uh, takes the service, as he leads the committal there at the graveside, asking that you would give him words of comfort that come not from within himself, but from your word and your word alone, because we are told that your word is the word of eternal life. And where else can a person go in such experiences and such providences but to this living and life-giving word. And as the family prepared to go their separate ways, some preparing to go back to other parts of this country and others preparing to go further afield, we pray, O oh Lord, that each and every one would be very conscious of your blessing and benediction being upon them, the benediction that is found from being in Christ, united by faith to the one who is the way and the truth and the life and that all who come to this Jesus, all who entrust themselves to him, uh, can know the joy of that so great salvation and that favour and your face being turned toward them. Bless each and every one here today, all those who are in this room, those who may be unable to attend this service because of health, because of travel, because of other issues. We pray that even this loss uh, might be in some way a blessing to every single person because that it would be used by you and of you to draw many to Jesus as their refuge, their strength, their present aid. We pray that this service itself would be a blessing to everyone, that we would be able to look back and say that this was a place where we were conscious of the presence of the living God, that it wouldn't be a place devoid of your own presence, but rather a place uh, where we're able to say uh, the Lord was there and met us with grace. And so we commit the remainder of this service to you. Uh, we remember James as he leads the service. We thank you for him and for your upholding of him through it. And we pray that you bless him in the days that lie ahead as we ask all these things in Jesus' precious, powerful, priestly name. Uh, for your great name's sake we pray. Amen. Our last item of praise is uh, Thine be the glory. Thine be the glory, risen, conquering Son. Endless is the victory, thou over death hast won.
as John Wesley said, fading is this worldling's treasure, all its posting pomp and show, solid joys and lasting treasures, none but science children know. May we know that before we leave this world. Now for the benediction, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit rest upon you and abide with you now and evermore. Amen. Now, following the interment, when you give the undertaker a few minutes, just you can sit down if you like, for a few minutes to enable them to remove the remove remains and the interment will be in Ardroil in Uig and if you're able to go along there the family would very like to see you there you are very well invited to do that and when you will leave you just for a few moments allow the family to leave by the side door here and then you can disperse use both entrances for your exit from the place may god bless us all together